13 Lectures on General History at China by Liu Zhang Chapter 7 The Great Sui and Tang Dynasties The Sui Dynasty, 581 to 618 AD Reunited an empire that had been divided during the Southern and Northern Dynasties, 420 to 589 AD Emperor Wen of Sui 581 to 604 AD, despite his headstrong character, was a successful ruler. But the reign of his successor Yang Guang, 604 to 18 AD, was a period of distress for the people, who had to bear a crushing burden of taxation and compulsory labor in order to support the emperor's lavish lifestyle accelerated the empire's descent into chaos. After founding the Tang Dynasty, Emperor Gaozu, whose personal name was Li Yuan, appointed his eldest son Li Jianchang as crown prince while making his second son Li Shimin king of Qin. Li Shimin, in what is known as the Xuanwu Gate Incident, murdered both his elder and younger brothers and seized the throne as Emperor Taizong. As the prosperous cities in the Sui, 581 to 618 AD, and Tang, 618 to 907 AD, dynasties, Chang'an was the political, economic, and cultural center as well as a well-developed commercial metropolis during the Sui and Tang dynasties. 1. Characteristics of social life in the Sui and Tang dynasties There were 14 avenues and 11 roads that divided the whole city into 108 sections within Chang'an city. The East Market and the West Market occupied two independent sections within the city which covered an area of 1,000 square meters, respectively. Two South-North roads and two East-West avenues crossed each other and formed a square, hatch-shaped area, which was established as the market. Mansions were built outside this square while shops of all industries were located inside of the square. Shops that exchanged similar goods normally clustered at neighboring areas. Approximately 220 types of business were conducted in the East Market. On the other hand, businessmen who traveled to China from Central Asia would meet and run their business at the West Market. Hence, the West Market was an international commercial center which was as equally developed as the East Market. The matrimonial pattern and customs were similar to previous dynasties. Influenced by the hierarchical marriage norm of the Shizu, the upper social class also took family status as the highest concern when establishing a marital relationship. The Shizu families always married their offspring to each other. If someone was not from a Shizu but would like to marry into one, they had to pay a huge fortune in order to establish the relationship. People in the Tang dynasty did not emphasize chastity. People mainly ate rice in the south and millet or wheat in the north during the Sui and Tang dynasties. The northern nomadic groups would take mutton, beef, and horse meat as their primary source of food. Dozens of types of vegetables were widely cultivated and used as food. Foreign vegetables, such as spinach and beets, were introduced into Chinese recipes. Some fruits and nuts that were initially nurtured in China, such as the date, chestnut, peach, cherry, plum, apricot, pear, orange, lychee, and banana, were widely cultivated and consumed nationwide. The Tang military conquered Gaocheng, 
currently located in Xinjiang province, in 640 AD. Various types of grape and winemaking methods were brought back to central China from Gaocheng. Wine has become more popular ever since. Tea was only popular in southern China before the Sui and Tang dynasty. Drinking tea as a social custom gradually spread into northern China since the middle of the Tang dynasty. The officials were divided into nine ranks in the Tang dynasty, the ninth rank being the lowest rank. Strict rules and different designs for official garments were assigned to each rank, for instance, the color of the emperor's clothes would be red and yellow. Purple was for officials above the third rank. Dark red was for officials above the fourth rank. Light red was for officials above the fifth rank. Dark green was for officials above the sixth rank. Light green was for officials above the seventh rank. Dark blue was for officials above the eighth rank and light blue was for officials above the ninth rank. Civilians normally wore white clothes. Abundant porcelain utensils were widely used in daily lives. The famous tricolor, Tang Sankai. The colors were green, yellow, and brown. Glazed Tang wares were also used as vessels for cooking and dining. The amount of silverware and goldware also increased during these periods. It was common to see silverware and goldware among wealthy families. Ordinary people in the Sui and Tang dynasties not only respected Buddhist and Taoist gods and ancestors, but they also worshipped natural spirits. The contents and patterns of religious events were rich and colorful. Each family placed their ancestor offerings and worship at the center of their religious beliefs. Transcribing Sutra, Engraving Sutra, Carving Buddhist Statues, building Buddhist temples, cutting grottos, and providing alms to the monks and nuns. Together with organizing and attending Dharma assemblies, were the commonest Buddhist activities. 2. The improvement of bureaucratic politics and the founding of the imperial examination the Sui dynasty, 581 to 618 AD reunified China after a period of division. Following this reunification, the Sui dynasty inherited the political system of the Northern dynasty and began to reconstruct it in various respects. Coming after the Sui, the Tang dynasty, 618 to 907 AD, continued to strengthen the imperial power by improving systems such as the chancellor system, the institutions, the selection system, the system of formulating laws, and so on. This was reformed into a system of collective chancellors in the Sui and the Tang dynasties. By dividing the power of the chancellor, the system of collective chancellors prevented conflict between the power of the emperor and the power of the chancellor, making each chancellor subordinate to imperial authority. Emperor Gaozong of Tang officially instituted the Baymen scholar who could share power with the chancellors. A special council called the Hanlin Academy was introduced to the imperial court for the emperor's convenience by Emperor Xuanzang of Tang. The scholars in the Hanlin Academy simply drafted documents for the emperor, taking the place of the executive secretariat. Gradually, though, 
The Hanlin Academy became the influential policy formulating institution. In general, the old institutions from previous dynasties would be kept on even when new ones had been instituted. The nine ministers system in the Qin and Han dynasties was transferred to the nine service agencies, Zhu Si, and the five offices, Wu Jian, in the central government of the Tang dynasty. Overlapping with the six ministries functionally, these service agencies were the imperial institutions tasked with dealing with the daily administration under the charge of six ministries. The dominance of the eunuchs was a serious political problem in the Tang dynasty. With the strengthening of the imperial power, the eunuchs who were close to the emperor became a significant tool for the emperor to control the imperial court and state affairs. From the reign of Emperor Xuanzang of Tang, the eunuchs began to play a more and more crucial role in imperial governance, since they presided over services inside the palace and supervised the military outside. During the Enshi Rebellion, the eunuchs started to become involved in state affairs. Even the decision to promote or demote the crown prince fell under the control of the eunuchs. The dominance of the eunuchs arose because the emperors appointed eunuchs to the posts of the officials. Among them, the right and left Cardinal Privy Council were responsible for communication between the Emperor and Chancellors. These were the most crucial positions, formed the political center of the Tang Dynasty. By combining the provinces and prefects in the local governments, the central government in the Sui and Tang dynasties started to govern the provinces in a direct way without intermediaries. In the Tang dynasty, the territory was divided into ten circuits as the administrative districts in which the central government could supervise the provinces. However, the gradual rise of the system of the regional military governors Jia Du Shi, impacted significantly on the politics of the Tang dynasty. One of the famous legacies that the Tang government left behind was the imperial examination. The Tang dynasty maintained the imperial examination of the Sui dynasty but widened the subjects. Besides the regular examination, which included Shu Kai, Ming Jing, and Jin Shi, less esteemed subjects such as the law, Ming Fa, calligraphy, Ming Zi, mathematics, Ming Suan, history, Yi Shi, San Shi, and Shi K, ceremony, Kai Yuan Li, and Taoist philosophy, Dao Ju, were added. There were five Jing, Shui Ju Yi Jing, San Li, San Chuan, and so on underneath the Ming Jing. The imperial examination was a form of draft which was centered on examination with self-recommendation. Two types of candidates could attend the imperial examination. The students who attended the state-run schools being based all around the country and the commoners who came from a decent family and were approved by the pre-examination censor. The imperial examination system had a significant impact upon the society of the Tang dynasty. As the selection methods employed in previous dynasties, which allowed the power of appointment to be devolved to the local governments, were abandoned. The imperial examination strengthened the central regime of the Tang dynasty by converging power into the hands of selecting officials. The imperial examination functioned as a new political intermediary to connect the grassroots and the high society. 
The imperial examination was open to the all the landlords and commoners who hitherto had no channel by which they could enter the government. The Tang rulers thereby expanded the social foundations of the regime. No intellectual from anywhere in the country could regret spending all his life attending the examination. Since graduating in that examination held open the hope that a commoner could enter the imperial court. A standardized and meticulous system for official ranking was another legacy of the Tang dynasty. The official ranking system of the Tang had nine ranks, each of which was divided into two grades. Zheng and Kong. There were two subgrades from the fourth rank of Zheng upwards, Shang and Sha. 3. The laws of the Tang dynasty The Tang rulers emphasized that the laws should be implemented prudently in order to avoid the abuse of judicial power. The Tang dynasty set up a system of review into death sentences by which a death sentence that has been passed by a lower court should be reviewed before the execution was allowed to take place. Emperor Xuanzang of Tang took charge of compiling the Tang Six Code which is regarded as the earliest administrative code in ancient China. The Tang Six Code ushered in a new situation in which the code and statute were to be stipulated separately as in modern times. The Tang Dynasty inherited the legal supervision system of the Han and Jin dynasties and developed the Department of Imperial Supervision, Yu Shi Tai. As to the judicial supervision, a case would be heard by the Dali Temple, the Supreme Court, and appeals made to the Ministry of Justice under the supervision of the Imperial Council. The administration of justice in the Zhengyuan period aimed, above all, at being humane, and punishment was seen as being of secondary importance. According to Emperor Taizong, the dead cannot come back to life and so the principles followed when applying the law must be leniency and simplicity. The Zhengyuan period saw the establishment of the rule whereby the death penalty could not be carried out until the emperor had been petitioned three times. The Tang dynasty's achievement in the area of lawmaking culminated in the systematization of existing Tang law that took place in the Kaiyuan period under Emperor Xuanzang's direction. Laws, Decrees and regulations were either recast anew or revised, resulting in a vast and comprehensive compendium of legislation. 4. The Tang Golden Age The Tang Golden Age began with the Zhengyuan period, 627 to 50 AD, Zhengyuan being the regnal title of Emperor Taizong. Following a transitional period spanning the reigns of Emperor Gaozong, 649 to 83 AD, Empress Wu Zetian, 690 to 705 AD, and Emperors Zhongzong, 684 and 705 to 10 AD, and Ruizong, 684 to 90 and 710 to 12 AD. The Tang Dynasty experienced a second Golden Age in the Kaiyuan period, 713-742 to 742 AD, of Emperor Xuanzang. During the later Tianbao period, 742-56 to 56 AD, of Emperor Xuanzang. The empire witnessed an intensification of social contradictions leading to the outbreak of the Anlutian Rebellion, which heralded the end of a period of prosperity that had lasted over 100 years. Two aspects of Emperor Taizong's political style stand out. 
his skill in choosing his ministers and his readiness to accept advice. These qualities were key factors contributing to the success of the Zhengnuan period. Emperor Taizong of Tang was well aware that ruling the empire depended on recruiting good talent. And unless talent was fully exploited, it could not deliver good government. He adhered to the principle of appointing people on their merit, whether they were his supporters or opponents. Emperor Taizong's commitment to creating stability and promoting economic development as a hallmark of the Zhengyuan period. In pursuit of this principle, the government in the Zhengyuan period aimed, above all, at simplicity, which in practice was manifested in four areas, frugality in expenditure, a reduction in taxation and corvée labor, the selection and appointment of honest officials, and ensuring the people had enough to eat and clothe themselves. From the third year of Zhengyuan, 629 AD, the emperor gave Li Jing and other commanders, at the head of a large army, the task of pushing back the Eastern Turks. They won an overwhelming victory. Together these actions brought the western regions under control and created the conditions under which the Silk Road, which started from Chang'an, would enter the most prosperous period in its history. But Emperor Taizong's policies towards the ethnic minority groups on the empire's frontiers were not solely military, also sought to foster peaceful relations. Another feature of Emperor Taizong's rule worth mentioning is his policy towards nationalities. An outstanding example of this was the marriage of Princess Wencheng to the founder of the Tibetan Empire Songtsen Gampo. It is from Emperor Taizong's time that the institution of Jimifujo first became widespread in the ethnic minority areas controlled by the Tang. This term refers to a system of administrative units which was supervised by the central authority but which was allowed to maintain their local methods of government and social customs. They were exempted from taxation and corvée labor, and enjoyed a high degree of autonomy. It was these policies that won Emperor Taizong the support of all the nationalities and earned him the title Tian Qihan, Heavenly Khan. During Wu Zetian's reign, the Li family's loss of imperial power provoked a palace power struggle and rebellion on the part of some members of the royal family but led to no major social upheaval. In order to consolidate her rule, Wu Zetian attacked the old guard and the nobility and encouraged the promotion of talent from the lower social classes. She initiated a system of secret police and informers and so as to strengthen her control of the bureaucracy. In the Kaiyuan period, Emperor Xuanzang promulgated a large number of edicts encouraging agriculture and sericulture and providing disaster relief and reception facilities for refugees and migrants. History describes the economic situation after the eighth year of Kaiyuan in terms of bumper harvests and an abundant supply of goods such that the people had no worries. 5. Religious beliefs and philosophy at the time the Tang dynasty that was presided over by Li family gave particularly high praise to Taoism as the surname of Laozi was also Li. The Edict Laozi takes precedence over Buddhism issued by Emperor Gaozu in the ninth year of Wood records that the proper sequence is Laozi first, then Confucius, then Buddhism. In 637 AD, 
Emperor Taizong issued an imperial decree to stipulate that Taoist priests are privileged over Buddhist monks and nuns. Emperor Gaozong conferred the High Lord, the title, the very high Xuanyuan Taoist emperor, and built temples to worship him. Buddhism became much more widespread in the southern and northern dynasties. Buddhist temples flourished. It was not until the Tang dynasty that influential Chinese Buddhist sects like the Tiantai sect, the Huayan sect and Zen Buddhism came into being. Compared with other sects of Buddhism, Zen Buddhism is more typically Chinese. The transliteration of Sanskrit word dhyana is channa, abbreviated as chan, which refers to meditative state. The Sanskrit samadhi is transliterated into Chinese as ding. Therefore, chan ding refers to being focused, dedicated, and having concentration. Only through this may troubles be overcome, according to Zen Buddhism, and can the disciple practice the way of discipline according to the three practices, discipline, jia, meditation, ding, and wisdom, way. Zen Buddhism was so named because it practices Chan Ding. As time went on, aided the development of Zen Buddhism, and the religion eventually split into two schools. Named the Northern School of Chan, headed by Yu Quan Shensho, 606 to 706 AD, and the Southern School of Chan, headed by Wei Nung, 638 to 713 AD. Comparatively speaking, the Northern School of Chan was more influenced by traditional Indian Buddhism and employed gradual teachings. By contrast, the Southern School advocated that the nature of the Buddha remained innate in all people and that it was unnecessary to petition for this to be infused from outside since once one perceived one's true nature one became a Buddha. In this way, it employed sudden teachings, an innovation which went against tradition. Owing to the great efforts of Shenhui, 670-762 AD, the disciple of Wainan. The southern school gradually replaced the northern school and became the mainstream. Wainang was posthumously revered as the true founder of Zen Buddhism. Zen Buddhism maintains that everybody has the nature of the Buddha inside themselves. If one can achieve enlightenment and not be influenced by deluded thought, then the nature of the Buddha becomes visible and one is now a Buddha in fact. Generally speaking, Buddhism emphasizes the idea of subjectivism, that is to say the power of the mind. Subjectivism has been analyzed in a relatively comprehensive manner. Xuanzang, circa 602-64 AD. The Tang Dynasty Buddhist master undertook all the hardships of a 14-year-long mission to find the Buddhist scriptures in India. He founded the Fashang School of Buddhism in China. This school developed subjectivism and proposed that there were eight perceptions. The first six perceptions are seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touch, and apprehension. The seventh sense is manas, mona, meaning the sense to discriminate and construct and the eighth is Elia, Ele, denoting the storehouse from which all seeds of consciousness emerge. In fact, the eighth sense means the mind, Shin, which plays a decisive role in all eight of the receptions. 